I, but I think that uh, these regulations would actually encourage the use of things like dark wallet in New York, because. Um, cause you know, they're not, they're not going to completely eliminate the Bitcoin economy in New York with this regulation. They would just push it on the ground. So, so then using things like dark wallet or dark coin, um, they, they would become necessities because, uh, because, you know, the only Bitcoin business that would be going on, uh, would be black market business and be things like, you know, drugs and guns. Mm -hmm. Cause both of those things are highly illegal in New York. Mm -hmm. So... So um, really, they're they're just setting themselves up to become like a capital in the Bitcoin economy for you know the underground uh, for <laughs> bad things like yeah like you know all all the all the drug dealers and gun runners are gonna flock to New York now because that's where all the uh, underground business is because that's where because um, Dark Wallet is gonna be really popular there it's gonna be really easy to use there. And you know they're not going to be able to do anything about that because Dark Wallet makes Bitcoin completely anonymous uh, just by default, yeah. and uh, so literally no way at all that you can track uh, Bitcoin as long as you know as long as you don't like don't purposely attach any of your personal information to it. Mm -hmm. um, and the same thing with Dark Coin. Dark Coin is a completely anonymous currency, so yeah. There's no way they can they would be able to track that down either. <laughs> They're just hurting themselves in the long run. So, um, on the privacy issue, I pulled up an article that was written by Eric Voorhees today, where he commented on the new New York regulations. Uh, he he says that basically, you will soon be unable to lawfully purchase a Bitcoin from any company that a has any customers in New York and B, doesn't keep an aggregated surveillance list of all customers, including name, address, photo ID, and other identifying information, regardless of the amounts transacted. So, is, is this basically the state trying to uh, completely bring the virtual currencies above board and, and shining a light on, on everything? And... Do, is 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 our projects like Dark Wallet really going to um, uh, uh, thrive, like in the underground, as people don't really want to uh, provide this identifying information? Yeah, I think I don't think they really care about bringing Bitcoin above board and making it legitimate. I think they just want to control it and they want to profit off of it. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, and people who really care about doing uh, business in Bitcoin in the state of New York, like, you know, for whatever reason, they can't leave New York. Maybe they can't afford it. But uh, but if they want to do business in Bitcoin bad enough, they're going to do it. So they're going to turn to to Dark Wallet. And uh, I mean, this is this is exactly why uh, Cody Wilson and Amir Taki are making Dark Wallet is for you know situations like this. They saw this coming down the pipeline. So so black markets can thrive, uh, you, you know, even when the government is like actively trying to stamp Bitcoin out, it'll be able to thrive. So hmm. this is gonna be like it, it could. If this becomes law in New York, it could possibly end up being a great testing ground for Dark Wallet. See how anonymous it actually makes Bitcoin. Yeah, that would be interesting. Um, like I, I didn't even personally expect regulations to be this, uh, this constrictive towards virtual currencies. And like I, I had liked the idea of Dark Wallet before, and other anonymous coins or anonymous implementations of crypto coins. But now I really love the idea because, like, I mean, in a way, I thought that people like Cody Wilson and Amir Taki were kind of just like a little bit, you know, paranoid of, of privacy issues and stuff like that and how much of a problem it really is. But, yeah, it's turning into a pretty big, yeah. pretty big problem, especially like right now this is just in New York and the regulations aren't even final yet. They, there's like a 45-day, uh, like, waiting period for comments and, and stuff like that and for businesses to get up to speed but if this gets like copied in other states and other states implement like similar regulations or 
if the entire United States government actually likes the implementation so much and, you know, puts it across the board for the whole country. Yeah. I mean, dark wallet and other similar services will be absolutely necessary for anyone who wants to use the the future of currency in a way that's anonymous and protects their privacy. But at the same time, that kind of scares me too, uh, because I don't I don't think you would really have a lot of like mainstream exchanges and things like that using dark wallet and like in like sheer defiance of the government. I, I think it would I think you would, the, these kinds of regulations would push Bitcoin so underground that it would be used for things like. Um, just like interpersonal exchanges, you know, like not not like buying things from Overstock, but like, like um, if I write you an article or something and you want to pay me, you, you know, you're gonna have to do it yeah. through Dark Wallet. Just ad and, hoc transactions, basically. Yeah, ad ad hoc an ad hoc economy uh, and things like drugs, uh, still be like the reigning currency of choice for drugs. And while I'm all for ending the drug war and um, and you know, like freedom of choice and everything like that. I think drugs are bad. I don't do drugs. I don't think anyone else should do drugs. So, I'm not really excited excited about um, the possibility of Bitcoin being used only for you know small ad hoc uh, and, drug you know, the and drug stuff. trade. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, I'm of the opinion that you know, depending on the drug specifically, um, it it can act. It can either be very helpful medicine for some people, or it can be very harmful um, uh, detriment to someone's life, depending on the drug and, and how they use it throughout their lives. So at, it's really more of a um, it's a health issue in society. It's not a criminal issue. And, you know, there was a story that just came out last week recently as well where um, the NSA doesn't really spy on terrorists that much. They actually spend 90% of their surveillance looking for uh, drug trades and drug transactions. So, you mm-hmm. know, <laughs> people, people who just want to get high and alter their consciousness, it's, um, it's not a criminal issue. It shouldn't be treated as a criminal issue by any government agency. And, you know, projects like Dark Wallet, Open Bazaar, um, dark coin, all of these, like who knows which one will be the most successful, but whichever one it is, it's going to really enable people to peacefully transact, uh, for products that they were going to buy anyway, drugs and, and what have you, uh, do it peacefully in ways that don't threaten their safety, you know, out in the streets or whatever, or with dangerous drug dealers. And, um, yeah, dark wallet's gonna help that. Um, you know, New York State doesn't want to see that happen, though. They, they just they want to see everything that's, that's happening in the entire cryptocurrency space, and keep it all above board. But it's gonna backfire, I think. It's gonna backfire. Yeah, it's definitely gonna backfire in New York. And um, you know, like we've been talking about, it's gonna push everything underground. And dark wallet will thrive, hopefully, if it works. I think it will work. Because uh, Cody Wilson's a genius, and he's work he's working with Amir Taki, so he, you know Taki must be pretty smart too. 